I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to hide this safe behind a puzzle. This project is just for fun. It's not supposed to be serious. It's not for you to actually hide valuable stuff in it. But recently, Josh and I were having a conversation and we came up with a funny idea for hiding a safe in a wall and then covering it up with a picture. But instead of like the movies where you just take the picture off or it swings out, we want to turn that picture into a puzzle. So what we're going to do is get a really cheap safe. We're going to embed it in this wall in between the studs. And then I'm going to show you the trick for creating a puzzle to hide it. This is a very cheap wall safe that we got from Harbor Freight. Now, I'm not expecting this to actually be a worthwhile safe. I'm not suggesting that you buy one. I'm just letting you know that this is what we're putting in the wall. It's just for fun. You could just as easily cut a hole in the wall and not put a safe in and still cover it up with the same mechanism. So I'm gonna cut out the drywall in between the studs and get this thing screwed in place and then I'll show you the next step. Now, I just used drywall screws to put those in, which is not super secure, but again, this is not to hold gold bricks, it's just for fun. Or is it? Or is it? The next thing is to make a picture frame to go on top of it. Now, there's a few things we have to think about here as we're designing that frame. It needs to go over this control pad, which sticks out about, I don't know, half of an inch. So we need to have a little bit more depth than usual in the frame, and it also needs to go on the outside of this metal flange because we want to be able to mount it outside of this into the existing stud that's still sticking past that. So we got to take these measurements, make sure we can cover that depth, and just make a simple frame. I'm going to be using a 2x4 to make this picture frame. Obviously you can make a frame out of whatever you want to, but of the stuff that I have in the shop right now, this is actually a pretty good thickness because we're going to need to, like I said, worry about the control panel, but we're also going to have to embed some stuff in the frame. So having a thicker than kind of three quarter inch frame is going to be good. A two by four will be perfect for that. And once you get it uh, squared off and painted and stuff, it won't really matter what kind of wood it is. Now, this is the most basic picture frame that you could possibly make. We do have another video a long time ago where I made a walnut picture frame with a really interesting kind of mitered half lap thing. If you want to see how to make a legit picture frame, go check that one out. There's also a bunch of other videos. That's not exactly the point of this particular project. I just need something that can hold the puzzle mechanism that's going to go on the back side of this. Let me get this thing glued up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Our super simple picture frame is pretty much ready to go. I'm going to reinforce it a little bit. Again, this video is not about making picture frames, but a cool little tip that I picked up from my friend David is to cut a little kind of surface imprint in here in the back side of this miter, and then you inset another piece of wood, and that helps keep it a little bit stronger. So I use the router to actually make this hole for that piece to fit into that I cut out on a laser, but you can also do it with the Forstner bit. So you take a matching size bit to the piece that you want to put in, then you drill a little hole. If you get it flat enough, then that piece should drop right in. So I'll have to fix that a little bit. But basically you glue that in and it makes it a little bit stronger. Now it's time for the actual cool thing about this frame. We're gonna put a puzzle on the back side of it. Josh and I were brainstorming one day and we came up with this little idea to have a post or screw sticking off the wall and then have a puzzle that goes over top of that post. Now this is made so that there's only one way that the post will fit through and then after that it's basically in a maze that you can't see because the maze is on the back side of the frame. So we had this cool little idea, Josh took it into Fusion 360, modeled up and printed out this cool little piece and we've got one of these for each side of the frame. So next we need to route an area in the back of the frame to install this and then we can try it out over top of these posts. So these two things need to be exactly in line from one side to the other. So I'm just gonna make a mark here at 17 inches. It doesn't really matter where it is, as long as it's the same. And then that will give me the area that I can trace these out and route out the holes for them. Okay. 
Okay. I'm learning. So realize that if this entry point is not centered within this key, then the keys can't be the same distance from the inside edge of the frame. So you could easily modify this to make that, uh, which actually probably would be the best option. That way, if we ever wanna swap out this key for a different one, we always have the same starting point right in the middle. So we're gonna go redesign these, remodel them, and then we'll lay them out again. Now that I've redesigned this and I've got these on the printer, while they're printing, we're gonna go ahead and route the holes for this to go into. So this area where the actual puzzle is is gonna have a deeper pocket so that the screw head can go down through it. And then on this top section, we'll just route down the thickness of this material so this will sit flush with the back of the frame. I've got those in there and now you can see kind of how this is going to work. You're going to have two posts that go in on each side and then you're actually going to end up moving the frame around to move these little puzzles along that post and once you get it to the right location you can pull it off the wall. Now that's pretty simple. We're actually going to make this a little bit more interesting. We talked about another option to kind of amp this whole thing up a little bit and that's going to be to electrify it. Basically by electrifying it, I just mean having some sort of a notification that somebody's messing with it and they've touched certain parts of the track. You could do this with a bunch of different things. You could have a light blink or you could have a siren go. In fact, you could even do a really mild shock on the person holding it, but that's a dangerous thing to do. There's very few situations where that works. It's not a good idea. Don't do it. <laughs> What we're gonna do here is use these little buzzers. Now this can take from three to 24 volts, so you can use these in lots of different situations. If you take a nine volt battery and you just touch it on there, it buzzes. So we're gonna make it so that this is only connected if someone is touching both of those posts. We're gonna wire up three of these so it's really loud and really annoying, and we'll go try it out. So the battery will go here, and then the power will run through this buzzer, through the wire, to this side over here, and when the connection is made between this side and this side through the posts and the wire, it will buzz. But we're gonna put three of these all running at the same time. This video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly subscription service and the things that they send out are highly tailored to a specific person's interest. The way this works is you fill out a little quiz and you say which things that you are interested in and then you get boxes with really unique goods that fit those categories. Say you're into barware or kitchen stuff or tech or outdoor gear. They've got all sorts of under the radar products that you've never heard of, but are super cool. Like for instance, I like outdoor stuff, but I never knew that a knife like this existed. This is a multi-tool with all sorts of different things on it. It's really well made. And this is something that I would take on a trip with me or leave in my car just in case. Another one of the things was an ammo case full of outdoor gear and a really good book explaining how to use it all. There's lots of different categories for lots of different interests. So if you want to find out more about Bespoke Post or you've got somebody in your life that you want to give a really cool gift, you can join for free. They're always changing up their lineup and if you ever get a box that you don't like, you can always swap it out for another one. If you want to find out more, hit the link down in the description and go check them out. I ended up trying several different things to make this circuit work and essentially, in case I haven't completely explained it yet, the battery is in the center here. One of the terminals of both sides of the battery go out like this. And basically what you're doing is connecting this side to this side when you hit these rails by the wire that's wrapped over the safe. Now, to get this circuit to work, I tried soldering on this aluminum tape, which I couldn't do. Maybe you can, but I couldn't get it to work. I tried overlapping this tape in different types. I used something called electric paint, which does work really well, but this tube is about eight years old, so I think this is just bad. What I ended up doing was using a single piece of aluminum tape to cover the entire thing and then cut away the parts that I didn't need, and that seems to act as a really nice conductive surface. The wire just goes underneath it and is pushed down really nicely so that they touch and conduct. So this thing should be set up. I think we can put a picture in the frame, and go try it. Josh, do you like my portrait? 
<laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. All right, so we've got this thing in place. It's wired up. So now you have the challenge of getting this thing off the wall in the shortest amount of time with the fewest number of beeps and frustration. And then you have to figure out the code behind it. Go. Well, I made the track so I can just sure, reverse sure. engineer what I did on the track. Sure. It's not going to shock me, is it? It's not going to shock you. It's just going to beep. Uh, I promise. Uh, I'm nervous, though. Okay, it's already frustrating. Mm. Ah, God, I don't like that. <laughs> I hate loud noises. Okay. Eh. See, if I, there's a little detent, and if I think that I'm in it, and it screams at me, then I freak out. Okay. All right. Uh-huh. See, I, I'm lost. Ah, okay. <laughs> I know it is vertical. Ooh, ooh. It did. I think I went back to the start. Back to the start. Okay. So back to the start. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I hate this sound so much. I have to close my eyes. So I didn't go. I can't go over any farther. Ooh, ooh, it did something else. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, if I were trying to steal from you, I would get mad and just try and rip this off the wall. <laughs> and this would wake you up. Yeah. If I were trying to, to rob you, hey, you would be awake. Whoa, oh, oh. Okay. I don't think that was supposed to happen, but I'm gonna stop it. I'm, I'm winning. <laughs> stop. Quit. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's awesome. That was frustrating. <laughs> okay. Camera's still going. Uh, so the it has an A and a B? Yeah. So there's only one, it's four numbers and one letter. Uh, the letter is arbitrary, so I'll just tell you, the last letter is an A. So you have a four number code to figure out, and it's based on something nerdy. And it's a deep cut. I have to fight the urge to put in my debit card pin number, so hold on. <laughs> it's not your pin. You know it's pin? No, okay, I don't know it's pin. I do now, it. but... Um. <laughs> that doesn't work. What? Oh, you broke it. What happened? You, like, for real broke it. What happened there? Did the battery die? It didn't say low battery, but it sure looks dead. <laughs> wow. Really? Okay. Frustration continues. Yeah. So it's not my pin number. Uh, what about 42? Because that's not it. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Uh, it's a nerdy. Pause the video and go tell me what you think the combination is. Because apparently <laughs> it's nerdy. It's not pi. We got that. It's not 42. We got that. Oh. They're sharing what it is. I tried to look in the reflection of the camera lens. <laughs> nope. Fart. Wait, what did uh, you do? It broke again. Oh no, maybe it Oh, you get locked out. Do you get locked out after a certain number of tries? Now, I did some Googling, as all robbers do in the heat of the moment, and I think it is not working again. What in the world? It has been a very long time. So I'm gonna try again. The code that I think after all of this, I think it is, you don't know. <laughs> first try. Yeah, first try. <laughs> There's diamonds in here. Baller. Ooh. These antiquity from an ancient times. There's top secret information. I'm gonna share it with you. What do you think it is? <laughs> well, congratulations! I'm taking all this with me. <laughs> I'm done. Hopefully, this gave you some ideas of some fun thing you can do. Obviously, this is not supposed to be a really secure situation, and 
he missed the real treasure in all of this is this photo. <laughs> Hopefully this gave you an idea for some cool little gadget that you could make really simply to protect something or just to make a fun prank to play on somebody else. If it gave you an idea, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. So if you are robbing someone's house and they have a Harbor Freight safe, just wait five minutes. Like go <laughs> steal some of their other stuff, rummage it through their personal belongings, watch TV. Cause you've made it a lot of noise and nobody's gonna stop you by this point. And just like in the movies, you know, you put a picture, put, put, put a picture, picture, picture. Let me start over, ready?